Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Lauren and this is Lauren Wins It. Today we're going to be doing this full face using products that only came from subscription boxes, namely Sephora Play, November through Current, and my Beautylish 2017 Lucky Bag. So let's go ahead and get started. I went ahead and used the Tarte Friction Stick. This is their solid cleanser that has an exfoliant in it. I dampened my face, used the stick to rub it all over, massaged it with my hands, and then I let it sit for about 10 minutes since they do advertise that you can use that as a mask as well. I really liked it. It wasn't too stripping. It was a little messy though because as you move that stick over your dampened face, some of that product tends to collect around the base of the product, um, namely like right around here. So it gets kind of that lip gloss tube excess to it. So you just need to remember to you know clean that off or as I did when I was using it, I just wiped it off and continued to apply it to my face because nobody wants to waste product. And then after I washed that off, I went ahead and used this Bioderma Sensi Bio that I got in my Beautylish 2017 Lucky Bag. And the reason I like this instead of a toner is because I can go ahead and use this around my eye area as well, just to make sure my entire face is clean and there's no residue. Then to moisturize, I tried the Caudalie Reservatrol Lift Face Cream. I do like this. Um, it doesn't have a scent to it in that I don't think it's perfumed. It does have a smell, uh, but I think that's just the active ingredients in it, which is fine for me. I'm scent sensitive, so I, pref you know, I prefer when there's no perfume added, if at all possible. And this is also supposed to have some light diffusing properties and act as a, a priming agent, so we'll see how that works out. And for eyes, I use the Caudalie Reservatrol Lift Eye Balm. I was really excited to receive this, I believe, in my November Sephora Play Box. I do have a night cream for my eyes that I like a lot because it does have some uh, retinol in it. But unless you're going to be putting sunscreen over any areas of your face that you're putting retinol on, you really shouldn't be wearing it during the day because it can react with the sun and give you a pretty bad sunburn. So I was looking for one that did not have any retinol or, or harsh ingredients in it like that, and I think this is going to work out really well. I'll probably end up using up this too. So let's go ahead and get started with the application. We're going to start with the Makeup Forever Step 1 Primer. This came in, I believe, my November Sephora Play Box. And this is uh, pardon me, a smoothing primer that has dimethicone in it. I'm not normally a fan. Uh, I think a lot of times it can make you look kind of greasy. So we're only going to apply this to half the face to see how it actually performs underneath the BB cream we're going to use here in a minute. So we're going to do it on my right side, your left side. Wow, so at least from my perspective over here, it's not leaving me with a shiny face, which is great. And it does feel really smooth and nice. We'll see if it ends up creasing like I've had some do, but it's not rolling or bunching up as I'm smoothing it out. I know some of these kind of pore perfecting or smoothing ones require that you tap it in. Uh, frankly, I don't have the, the patience to sit there and tap in something that's supposed to be smoothed over the skin. So let me just get out a little bit more for the forehead area and the nose. And this does look like it has some tint to it when you put it on the back of your hand, but it smooths out and it doesn't look like it gives any coverage at all. I think we're sufficiently primed on this half. Let's go ahead and get into the BB cream. We're going to be using the Bosha BB cream. This is self-adjusting and it came in my January 2017 Sephora Play Box. I'm going to try it over the primed area first, and I am going to try and take it up into my eye area so, to see if we can get enough coverage to skip out on using a concealer. Because I feel like if you're using a BB cream, it's probably not a full glam kind of day. So if we can get away with not using our concealer, I'm willing to skip a step. So it's blending pretty well. Um, for those of you that are wondering about my skin type, I am normal to oily combination. And the concerns I'm looking to cover today are I have a fair amount of hyperpigmentation and some scarring from acne. Uh, I do tend to break out along my jawline and I do have fairly dark hereditary circles. So it doesn't matter how much sleep I get, it always looks like I have about four hours. So let's try it on the non-primed side. So far I really like the finish. We'll have to see if this oxidizes at all. I know it's self-adjusting, but that doesn't mean that it won't dry down a different color than what you expected as you applied it. And again, I'm taking it even underneath my eye and on my eyelid. One thing I forgot to mention about the Reserve Troll Eye Balm is that you can also use it around the delicate skin around your lip line. That, uh, the skin there is just about the same thickness as it is in your under eye area. And so it's a really good place to go ahead and uh, try some of those anti-aging properties. 
as you can. Well, this is actually a lot better looking, at least right now, than I thought it was going to be. I'm normally a medium to full coverage liquid foundation user and or a full coverage powder foundation user, so this is my first foray into a beauty cream. So far, I'm liking We'll see it. how it wears, though. And I think I'm gonna do brave and skip concealer. So we're gonna move straight to a powder. Uh, I've talked about this before, it's the Laura Mercier Loose Translucent Powder, and I'm going to use this along with my Wayne Goss Original Holiday Brush. I believe this has been added to the, uh, the full collection now under the number 00. And because this is nice and pointed, you can go ahead and use it underneath your eyes to set your under eye makeup or concealer if you're using some. I do tend to have oily under eyes, so I, even if I'm not using concealer, I go ahead and give some extra love. To that area of my face, and we swirled in the cap, getting it right underneath the eye, and then we're gonna blend out the powder on the rest of the brush over the face, paying extra attention to our T zone, because that's where I get oily and the chin. So now I'm gonna start on my eyes, and the next product I'm going to use is this Laura Mercier Caviar Stick in Rose Gold. And it's beautiful, even though I don't think rose gold is the best for it. It's really more of a champagne. Let's go ahead and just swipe this all over the lid. We'll blend it out with our fingers. This will help hopefully prime our eye look and give a little bit of light to the lid. Okay, great. The next product I'm going to move on to is the Makeup Atelier 5 Pan Palette in Natural Chestnut. I did get this in my Beautylish 2017 Lucky Bag. And unfortunately, this palette does not name the colors, or at least it doesn't on the packaging, either on the back or on the external packaging. So I'll do my best to be descriptive about which color I'm using where. First one I'm going to start with is this shade right here in the middle. I'm going to use that all up in the socket here as a transition color and also to lay down a base for some of the other darker colors we're going to use, which helps them blend out a lot. So I'm pulling it down just to the top of my lid and then continuing to blend it out up through my orbital bone and also a little bit outside outer V, all the way through that orbital bone, down just the slightest bit on the lid. Now using the same brush, which is a Wayne Goss number four, I'm going to take the second darkest color, which is right here. We're going to put it in our outer V and then up through the crease. I'm going to take it from the lash line, out through that outer V, and then up through the crease. This is my first time using Mick Atelier powders, so there may be a little bit of a learning curve to this look. These are not as easy to blend as I would have hoped, so this may be the best we're going to get on this eye. Let's try the other one. Again, down starting at the lash line, up through the outer V, blending against the base of the orbital bone, and up through the crease. And there is a fair amount of excess that I keep needing to tap off, so they are a little bit powdery. And then just using whatever product's still left on your brush, I'm going to sweep in to blend it to the outer third of my eyelid. Okay. Great. And now I'm going to switch brushes to the Wayne Goss number, this is the number five. I'm going to take that deepest color right here, and we're just going to give a little bit more dimension to the outside corners of our eyes. So we're going to start right at that lash line. Ooh, this one's really pigmented, you guys. Outer corner of the eye, just through the crease on the outer third of your lid, and just like at that last shade, I'm gonna go ahead and blend it inward. This is not behaving like I had expected. Um, the last color that we used, it really took a lot of dips back in the pan. This one, however, almost is behaving like a powder liner um, in that once you put it down, you really don't have a lot of flexibility about moving and blending. Um, so we're a little bit more harsh than I think I expected to go for. But that's what first impressions are for. You have to try it, you have to play with it. Let's try the other side here. So again, starting right at the lash line, out through the outer V, bring it in along your crease, and then just pull it in through the outside third of the lid. I think so far, so good. It did take a little extra blending work than I'm used to. Um, but again, first time using this product. Next, I'm going to be using a Kat Von D liquid eyeliner in Trooper. This came in, I believe, a Sephora Try It kit. It was the 2016, gosh, I can't remember. It's no longer available, unfortunately. I believe this is a 2016 Sephora's most coveted set. All right, 
I'm just applying it to the base of my lashes to get good coverage right along the lash line. And then I'm going to go ahead and make the outer third a little bit thicker. I'm not going to wing anything today. It just doesn't feel like a wing day. But let's go ahead and do the other side here. And a lot of subscription boxes and some of the Try It kits all had this Kat Von D in it. And I say, bring it on. I love this eyeliner. I love that I didn't have to repurchase it constantly. And there is one of these things, especially eyeliners and mascaras, I actually like better in these smaller sample sizes. They let you use up pretty much all of the product before it dries out or before it starts to get unsanitary. And for mascara, I'm going to be trying the Bobbi Brown Smoky Eye Mascara. I believe this is in black. I haven't opened it yet. And this was in a Sephora play box. I want to say it was October or November. It could have even been December. This is pretty. It's uh, not very volumizing from what I can tell. And there are some tiny, tiny clumps in it. In fact, it's coming out of the tube kind of chunky. And I just got a ton of product in my waterline. So this is probably going to be a one time trial, which is too bad. I really like Bobbi Brown products may not be the mascara for me. Frankly, roller lash by Benefit, so it's a pretty high bar, so it is what it is. So for brows, I had a pretty hard time trying to find something that came in either a subscription or a try it kit. And I did find my Benefit Cabral, which came with the Sephora 2016 Most Coveted set, but it's not my color. It's shade two, it's pretty light. It'd probably be great for somebody who has light blonde or blonde hair. Um, also, when I went to go make sure that it was clean and the brush was good to go, because it does come with a brush on the end, the product is all dried out. So we're going to have to improvise. I'm going to go back into my Makeup Atelier palette, and I'm going to try and mix these two colors to see if I can get close to my brow color. Uh, if not, I do have an Anastasia brow definer standing by. But first, we're going to try our Wayne Goss brow set, which came in my Beautylish 2017 Lucky Bag. So. Can we talk about this one for a second? I understand the lash comb, but what is this for that a spoolie doesn't solve for you? And also, can you see how big it is? It's like, it's like toothbrush size as far as how tall it is. So I guess we'll give it a try. It's really nice and soft. I'm really not sure if you need it. Um, I'm going to get going in again with the Wayne Goss number 21 and mixing those two powder colors for my brow. I feel like this is also just a huge brush. Look at it in, you know, up to my eyebrow. It's almost double the width of my tail. So we'll see how manageable this is to so, use. So probably not a brow color I would use again, but you know, it's what we have working today, so. The brush is really nice. It is just huge. Does Wayne have big brows? I watch them all the time on YouTube. And perhaps it's a personal preference kind of designed for him. I mean, I don't think we're getting Instagram brow results today, but I think it's passable. So again, I'm gonna go up through the front part of the brow, sweeping straight up, and then I'm going to take it and carry it backward, following how my hair falls. And I guess the benefit of this powder that we had trouble with on the eyelids is that once you sit it down on your brows, it does tend to just stick around where you left it. So hopefully it's not going to transfer or smudge around. Well, I don't think this is going to be the brow product of the year for 2017, but it was a fun thing to try. The next thing I got from my Beautylish bag was the Natasha Denona blush palette. This is in number eight, and it comes with colors Tutu and Peach. So I'm gonna go ahead and try this with a Wayne Goss number two. So the BB cream has dried down completely, and coverage is not great. So I think if you have skin that is mostly perfect, you just want a little bit of evening out, you'll be okay, but it's not covering up stuff like my little sunspot here or much of the hyperpigmentation I have down around my jaw. And with this Natasha Denona blush, I'm using the peach shade on the outer portions of my cheekbone. Then I'm going to use Tutu, which is the lighter shade, and the apples of my cheeks and sweep it up almost like a highlighter because it is a really, really light shade. It does have a nice iridescence to it. I'm not, again, used to using blushes that have shimmer, because I, I like to concentrate my highlighter on higher points in my face, but I think it's pretty. And last but not least, we're going to top off the look with Clinique's lipstick, or pardon me, they're almost lipstick, in Black Honey. 
And I love this, but I'm kind of bummed out because mine broke. So if I were to turn this upside down, this bullet would just completely fall out, but I'm gonna do my best to use it up. So this is the finished look that I achieved using only subscription and sample box products. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos from me, please subscribe. And if you'd like to be notified when new videos come out, please go ahead and ring that bell down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.